This is from Phil Gordon, who is Kamala Harris's national security advisor, said VP Kamala Harris has been clear. She will always ensure Israel is able to defend itself against Iran and Iran-backed terrorist groups. She does not support an arms embargo on Israel. I'm going to repeat. She does not support an arms embargo on Israel. She will continue to work to protect civilians in Gaza and to uphold international humanitarian law. But the question is, why are you so focused on, if you're focused on international humanitarian law, why aren't you focused on uh, the law that says that the people who are occupied have a right to defend themselves? They always focus on the right of the occupier, but they don't focus on the right of the occupied. So a book I'm reading right now on Tappy is How Nonviolence Protects the State. Ooh. Um, You know, this is a part of my Black August reading. I've already said this um, on a video, but if you want to read with me, I will be doing a chapter breakdown of this. So mm -hmm. read with me. Let's talk about it, right? But history is written by the victors. History yeah. is written by the colonizers. The standards of, are set, the standards of respectability and of what is culturally acceptable is set by the colonizers, okay? So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when I see Kamala Harris doing like this switch up bullshit because she's really trying to salvage the Gen Z vote because the Democratic Party can't win without Gen Z, period. The Democratic Party cannot win without Gen Z and like belittling Gen Zers, belittling people, Arab people, Palestinian voters who are directly affected, whose family members will never be able to come back, who have watched the destruction of their homeland, who have seen entire bloodlines, yeah. entire, like I really like entire bloodlines. And generations of people wiped off the face of the earth. You can never bring those people back. So being callous, being disrespectful, being dismissive is not the way to go. And Kamala Harris is not an idiot. Kamala Harris's advisors are probably very well-educated people. They're not fucking stupid. They know that as well. But if you're if your uh, policy, if your shit doesn't come with, um, number one, a Palestinian right to return, because there are 14 million Palestinian refugees all around the globe right now that would love to go back to their homeland at any time. So if there's no Palestinian right to return, shut it up. If there's no, if there's no actual like sovereign Palestinian state, shut it up. If there's no end to the apartheid state, shut it up. Miss Afini. You know, all the hoes back in the 90s used to do the pump. I love doing a pump. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> pump it, pump it, pump it. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You get me in trouble on my own damn show. What the hell is inside this tea? I just want to let everybody know now, also right up front, that I'm streaming off a hot spot, y'all. I've never done that before. So if I drop off, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Hey, <laughs> 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 got to let them know. Got to let you know, my boy. Got to I'm let you know. I'm going to spit out my tea and ruin my whole ensemble I have right here because this stuff is not cheap. <laughs> it ain't expensive, but it ain't cheap. I'm broke, you know. So <laughs> we tea sipping today. I'm curious. <laughs> it is so good to see you. Of course, I've been seeing a lot of what you've been doing on TikTok. Uh, you are, of course, a, a a Gen Z. So, of course, you're doing the Gen Z thing on TikTok, and you've been making the rounds, especially on TikTok. One of the things I really want to give you your flowers for is that you've been speaking about a lot of what's been going on in Palestine, especially. You have been out there in the streets uh, helping to protest against the uh, imaginary state, as you so eloquently say. 
against the, the what's going on uh, in occupied Palestine, what they're doing against the Palestinians in Gaza, Rafah, Janine, and other places. Um, and then on top of that, your organizing work has been very heavy on the ground. Shout out to Chuck Modiano for also displaying a lot of what you've been doing on the ground out there as well. I gotta get Chuck on here. Yeah, I, can, no, I, can, no. damn, I keep forgetting. I just, Chuck, I'm coming. I'm coming for you. Um, but one of the things uh, you also had made a bit of a stir in, which I appreciate, is that you've been talking about how Kamala Harris ain't it. And I, one of my first questions, <laughs> one of my first questions I wanted to ask you regarding Kamala Harris is what are your thoughts about Kamala Harris being the presumptive nominee uh, now for the Democratic Party? And suddenly many pro-Palestine supporters now jumping on board the Kamala train and now supporting her. I mean, I'm just, all I got to say is y'all ain't got no backbone. Y'all need to stand the fuck up. Okay. Oh, we can y'all need to stand the fuck stand up. I beg, I beg of y'all. And all this shit that I'm seeing online between black Americans and Palestinians, when I say the CIA is working so hard on y'all and y'all is just eating it up, y'all is eating it up, okay? Y'all is just slurping it down. And let me mm. tell you something. If you stand up straight, the empire cannot walk on y'all back. But guess what? Y'all is bent, okay? Y'all are bent. And that's the reason why a lot of y'all is out here endorsing Kamala Harris with absolutely no policy demand, policy demands, no strategy, no nothing, just just vibes. We just out here with vibes. <laughs> mm -mm. Look, I'm 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 gonna solidify your point. Let's go. Let's go to her website right now. Live, live right now. Okay. Let's let's take a look. Come Good vibes. Ahead. Coconut trees. Hang on. Do, giggles. Do you see? Hang on, I don't I don't see any type of policy whatsoever. Good vibes, coconut trees, and but giggles. Now there. give me your money. Now mm -hmm. give me your money. Now give me your money. I'm taking money from Wall Street, from APAC. I'm taking money from Lockheed Martin. I'm taking money from Ra Raytheon. But I want your working class money. Give me your money. I'm not telling you what I'm going to do, but I want your money. That's what Kamala said to y'all. And guess what you motherfuckers did? Y'all gave her $40 million. <laughs> hey. Hey. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we checked. We've been checking day by day. I'm like, I'm look, I'm like I'm like TI like looking for the policies. Where they at though? Where where where, where they at though? The policies. Though? I don't see the any policies. So my question is, why are people jumping on a train? when the person who is trying to sell you ain't telling you what you're going to get. Because they only care about fascism as long as it affects them. They're actually fascist for, and that's how, that's what, that's the real problem. I need a lot of y'all to understand, to deeply understand that there are many more fascists in this country than there are of us. There are many more people that are okay with hyper-nationalism, that are okay with American exceptionalism. As long as it means that their rights are fine, they do not care about the sacrifices of the millions of lives across the globe that are lost so that way we can have our comfort our comforts that shit is fascist in and of itself and the fact that people cannot conceptualize that they're not, not making that that connection is really fucking scary because while y'all sitting up here talking all this shit about donald trump y'all are real live telling people to shut up and vote while kamala harris funds genocide because she's a part of the administration and let's be very clear joe joe was his elevator is not hitting the top all right Joe's elevator is not hitting the top. So who do you really think is sitting in the sitting in these meetings? It's not like he's not running the country. It's his cabinet. It's his vice president. It's his advisors. Like she is an active part of the destruction of Gaza. She's an active part of the American boots on the ground right now that we that, that are participating in genocide. So it's just like y'all are getting on the train for liberal fascism. And the thing about it is, the, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say, but the scariest part about it is that Kamala Harris is gonna be like Barack Obama, but I think a little more emboldened because 
even some of the things that she's saying around the border are farther to the right of Trump. But I thought that was fascism, though, y'all. What happened to that? She's taught like she's still talking about supporting um, the state of the imaginary state. She still um, is in very much imperialist. She's still very much pro cop. Her entire messaging of her campaign is carceral. I'm the prosecutor. He's the felon. So if we're abolitionists, if we're talking about decarceration, if we're talking about anti-imperialism, well, this lady, the black lady, I promise you that she's going to be a better steward of the fascism that they're trying to bring forward than Trump could ever be. Because, you know, Trump is saying all the bullshit out loud. But much like Barack Obama did and carried out the fa- and carried out fascism for this country, much like Barack Obama did and did it in blackface, Kamala's going to do the same thing. Period. So it's just like y'all are shaming me. Y'all are in my DMs cussing me out. Y'all are in my comments talking shit. Because I'm telling y'all that you have no fucking backbone because I'm telling y'all that at the end of the fucking day, we can have better. We can do better. But y'all are too scared, cowardly, indoctrinated to do anything different. Period. Like you're too selfish to do anything different. And I don't always say it like that, but at the end of the day, the, at the baseline, that's really what it is, period. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and this is actually you making me jump in my questions because you you alluded, alluded to something. But one of the questions that I had as well, what do you say to the people who are marginalized like you and me? Right. Because, you know, in, in, in fact, you know, I, I would say that you, you're more marginalized than I am. Um. But people who are marginalized like us, who say that they just want to safeguard the legal protections that they have already by continuing with the Kamala Harris, they, they call it they call it harm reduction. I just want to stave off some of the harm. What do you say to people like that who are afraid of Republicans gaining power? What I would say about that is if you're going to focus on harm reduction, you need to focus on harm reduction in your local community. Period. There has been so many things that have happened, so many rights that have been stripped away. Homelessness was criminalized by the Supreme Court under a Democratic administration. If they want to fucking do something about the Supreme Court, if they want to expand the court, they would do that. And I think that's the largest fucking issue. That's the largest issue. Like, I understand wanting to safeguard your rights. I understand. I understand wanting to protect yourself and protect your community, especially if you live in a red state. I get that. But your local politics, your local politics is where a lot of that change is going to come from. On the national level, if we're talking about liberation, if we're talking about anti-oppression, if we're talking about intersectional, an intersectional lens of abolition and and a, a transformation of society, we have to deal with imperialism because our rights in this country are, di- are co- uh, directly connected to the rights of the people that we are marginalizing outside of our borders. Full stop. If they are dehumanizing people outside of our borders, they will continue to dehumanize you. So many rights have been lost under a Democratic administration. And guess what? They did nothing. They did nothing. Roe v. Wade. There was a Democratic majority in both houses. And even if Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema want to do some bullshit, even if they want to do some bullshit, one of them want to do some bullshit, guess what? Kamala's the 51st vote. So it's just like, if they wanted to do something, they would have done something. And my problem is, is once you get her elected, once you get her elected, she owes you nothing. She owes you nothing. And my biggest problem with a lot of like the, like, let's just call it liberal rhetoric because that's what it is. It's liberal rhetoric. A lot of the problem with that is is y'all are more mad at people that actually want to like do something different, build towards something different, put different, put our energy towards something different than y'all are at the fascistic institutions that this country is built upon. Because if you was really mad about democracy, if you really wanted to save democracy, you'd be giving a fuck about the Electoral College. If you really wanted to save democracy, you'd be giving a fuck about the Supreme Court. If you really wanted to save democracy, you'd be giving a fuck about money and politics and the corporate stronghold that they have on our our fucking policy decisions. That's what you'd be worried about. But instead, but instead, 
You are focusing all of your energy on chastising people that are continuing to hold the line, that are that are brave enough, that are mm. courageous enough to say, what the fuck are y'all doing? Hold the goddamn line because we didn't get shit yet. Period. True. True. Um, you know, in fact, uh, you know, in, in uh, a comrade of mine, we had we had a slight if you can consider consider this a slight disagreement, very slight, whether we were in a full fascist or proto fascist government. He still thought it was fascist, but was it proto fascist or full fascist? And the reason why I think that we're already in fascism is because for black people, fascism is a Tuesday. All right. And how do we know this? George Jackson said it. He said it, what, 40, almost 50 years ago? He already talked about how we were living in fascism. Look at how they treated um, one of our most premier and most prolific revolutionaries, Asada Shakur. She was an innocent woman. She, she literally in Cuba on exile right now for what? For what? And the thing is, is like, my question is, if we're really trying to save ourselves from fascism, can you vote it out? Because if fascists can't be voted out, if fascism could have been voted out, then we would have voted out Hitler years ago. But the only way to get rid of a fascist is pause. A decisive anti-fascist. I'm on YouTube, so I got to be careful, but... Right? It has to be a decisive anti-fascist movement, a decisive, well-organized, on time, standing on business, anti-fascist left is the only thing that can combat fascism. There is no such thing as a neoliberal solution to fascism. Because Kamala Harris, much like Barack Obama, much like Bill Clinton, much like even to a certain extent, Jimmy fucking Carter, will do nothing but continue to enable the fascism of this country, to preserve the fascist institutions of this country. Because if they actually gave a fuck, if they actually gave a fuck, about you as black people, about you as trans people, about you as marginalized people, then they would end poverty. But they won't. They're giving all of their giving all of their our money to fucking military contractors because they're invested in the stocks that these military contractors are also profiting from. So these same politicians that you're putting your faith in are the same ones that are spending your money, your dollars. Yeah. on endless war, destruction, and genocide. But yeah. you want to be mad at me because I am trying to build towards what we all said we were trying to do, which was actually destroying fascism. You cannot destroy fascism with neoliberalism. Being radical is nothing more than actually getting to the root of what the fucking problem is. And the root of the problem mm -hmm. is the fact that this country was built on blood and bone. The root of the problem is that no matter who the fuck is president, the infrastructure of this country is fascistic. It does not matter who the hell the commander in chief of the fascistic empire is. If we continue to operate like the world fucking police outside of our borders, if we continue to rape and fucking pillage every land we come across. Yeah. Period. Let, let me address this. Uh, from Hank. Hank says, y'all will block me, no problem. But here it is, the black minds are in the churches, in the streets. If we aren't in those spaces talking this talk, then it's utterly useless. And I was in those streets last week. I was in those streets. Afini has been in those streets. She's been in those streets longer than me. And guess what? I'm almost double Afini's age. Yeah, I know I look good. But I'm almost double Afini's age. I'm old enough to be her, I'm almost, almost enough old enough to be her father. But the thing is, it's like, we're in these streets. The question is, Hank, I would love to see you in these streets with us. And I hope you are. But the thing is, is like, this is why channels like mine exist. 
to help get you out in these streets, right? What 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 did uh Jennifer Lewis say in that song? I don't want nobody fucking with me in these streets. That's the thing. <laughs> but that's the thing, because ain't nobody got time for that. But the thing is, like, this is why people like Afini are on TikTok making these TikToks. And the problem is, is that whenever we talk about these subjects, oh, a lot of people, they don't listen because it's not sexy, especially when we talk about, like, for instance, me and Savvy on RBN were actually talking, having conversations about how to organize and what to do when it comes to organizing. I guarantee you this, by the time I get to talking about Amendment 2 and what we can vote on on ballot initiatives, which is local, within our community, half the people in the stream are going to drop off. Why? Because it's not sexy. So that's the thing. The thing is that people actually have to be made aware of what's going on. And a lot of times it's not the sexiest thing. And so this is why I have organizers like Afini on to talk and also to help activate people because a lot of us are like this. And so this is where th these are the streets now, too. These aren't just the physical streets. These are also the streets. And what I also say is Hank ain't wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? A lot of our <clears throat> a lot of our black folks are being radicalized into right wing ideology through these churches, yes. through Christian and through Christianity. A lot of our black folks are being radicalized into right wing ideology because like, let's just be real. You know what I'm saying? When your basis and understanding of politics is mostly around like what your like direct socioeconomic status is when it's mostly based around what your direct life experience is you're more likely to be influenced by certain shit it's just the case and you know one thing that i will say is i do a lot of organizing with formerly incarcerated people i do a lot of organizing with currently incarcerated people formerly incarcerated folks black folks support trump because he passed the CARES Act. The CARES Act, I know niggas right now that's walking around free after 30, 40 years in prison because of that, uh, because of the CARES Act. So the you're right. Act? Oh, first step back, my bad. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there are people that are walking around free in these streets because of that. And like, that is a, that is a like real life tangible benefit that that you can't just take away from people but it is yeah. our it is our job as organizers as people that are having these conversations to not number one yes have them on the internet you know what i'm saying but also go into the streets go into go into church like going to churches and like religious groups going to aa meetings because that's another great place to do outreach like and have these conversations about like the contradictions within the system because right now a lot of people don't see shit but like what's right in front of them on their plate so you know <clears throat> hank you a little rude but i understand your point though <laughs> and my thing is it's like no i'm not blocking you because the thing is it's like you're not saying anything threatening to any and you're not spamming the comments so why would i block you it's not going to happen but my thing is it's like to address what you said the thing is it's like you know, we're out here. The thing is, is like there's needs to be more people and we need to activate these people. And some of these people are also online, too. So we got to we got to activate them where we can find, them. you know, meet people where they are. But I hope to hear more from you, Hank, in, in, in your dialogue as well. So thank you very much for that. But one and of the things I wanted to Harris hour. Huh? I said, but back to the fuck Kamala Harris hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I want to share this with you as well. Uh, and I know you've probably given your thoughts in the past, but I want to get them fresh off the press here. Let's go into <clears throat> this, this jerk here. I'm trying to watch my language. This jerk here said this. He intends to surrender our fight against the climate crisis and he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. <sighs> I 
your thoughts. I said this in the video already, but I'm trying to tell y'all they're going to black girl magic this lady to death. Like they're going to black auntie her to death. And one thing about it is because I've done a lot of like campaign strategy and political strategy, <clears throat> you know, like on the local level. Um, and I've also, you know, like working on local level, I work with a lot of local politicians um, as well. So like I've been hearing, they be talking a lot of shit about the ins and outs about how politics works on the local and the state level. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I would say the national level, even though it's messier, it's a pretty, like, it's just a, a macro version of that micro, uh, that microcosm, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, Kamala Harris is literally being coached. She's being coached. She's being coached by these people to say, like, this is how, like, to try to, like, strike a balance and get these voters to try to make sure. And I don't know if you saw, but she turned around and she was like, because it happened again. I think that was in Detroit and it happened again in, I think, like Phoenix or something um, mm -hmm. where there were protesters that interrupted her speech. And she was like, she was like more compassionate in her answer. And it's because she got dragged the first time. Like her advisor, literally like her advisors, her, her PR people, her narrative people, her cons people, they're constantly shifting her Cause this is what a campaign is all about. You feel me? Yep. And I think that the most important thing that I really want for, pe for people to pull away from this video is that this is the time. This is the time to interrupt her. This is the time to pressure her. This is the time to try to, to get her to shift her rhetoric because the thing about it is, the thing about it is even her shifting rhetorically shows that even though she's probably not going to do much policy wise, mm -hmm. she is responsive to some pressure. So what does it look like for us to actually escalate what that pressure looks like? Yeah. And that means with withholding votes. That means a whole bunch of different things. What does it mean to actually escalate what that pressure looks like? Because we can do so much more if we actually had a strategy to doing this. But y'all just be y'all just be blindly marching. I just don't get it. I just I don't yeah. get that part. I don't get yeah. that part. I really don't. Yeah. Let me let me also uh, share this to to your point as well. This is actually uh, Kamala Harris responding in Phoenix. Which includes respecting the voices that I think that we are hearing from. And let me just say this on topic of what I think I'm hearing over there. Let me just speak to that for a moment and then I'm going to get back to the business at hand. So let me say, I have been clear. What in the world was that? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's like they told they told that lady, hey, you're a black woman. They barely fucking like you anyway. It's very easy for a woman to look bitchy. So you have to be more compassionate. And that's what that was. That was her and her comms team version of compassion and they still miss the fucking mark try again yeah. she said i have been <laughs> clear now's the time to get a ceasefire deal and get the hostage deal done the president and i are working around the clock to get this done uh and so the thing is it's like one of my biggest issues uh with her is that she's talking about a ceasefire deal my question is is uh what happens after the ceasefire and one of the top negotiators for Hamas that would negotiate a ceasefire, they killed him. And so my biggest question is, you know, why why are you, you know, offing smoking the people who actually would negotiate a ceasefire? Because isn't that counterproductive to what you said you were to do? And so, and, and then a lot of people were talking about how Oh, well, she met with the uncommitted voters and the people with the leaders of the uncommitted movement. And she promised that she would go and do uh, a, a, have a conversation with them about an arms embargo. I'm going to use these words very specifically, an arms embargo to Israel. But then her national security advisor said this. This is from Phil Gordon, who is Kamala Harris's national security advisor that VP Kamala Harris has been cleared. She will always ensure Israel 
is able to defend itself against Iran and Iran-backed terrorist groups. She does not support an arms embargo on Israel. I'm going to repeat. She does not support an arms embargo on Israel. She will continue to work to protect civilians in Gaza and to uphold international humanitarian law. But the question is, why are you so focused on, if you're focused on international humanitarian law, why aren't you focused on uh, the law that says that the people who are occupied have a right to defend themselves? They always focus on the right of the occupier, but they don't focus on the right of the occupied. So a book I'm reading right now on tapping is how nonviolence protects the state. Um, you know, this is a part of my black August reading. I've already said this um, on a video, but if you want to read with me, I will be doing a chapter breakdown of this. So mm -hmm. read with me. Let's talk about it. Right. But history is written by the victors. History yeah. is written by the colonizers. The standards of, are set, the standards of respectability and of what is culturally acceptable is set by the colonizers, okay? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when I see Kamala Harris doing like this switch up bullshit because she's really trying to salvage the Gen Z vote because the, the Democratic Party can't win without Gen Z, period. The Democratic Party cannot win without Gen Z and like belittling Gen Zers, belittling people, Arab people, Palestinian voters who are directly affected, whose family members will never be able to come back, who have watched the destruction of their homeland, who have seen entire bloodlines, yeah. entire, like I really like entire bloodlines and generations of people wiped off the face of the earth. You can never bring those people back. So being callous, being disrespectful, being dismissive is not the way to go. And Kamala Harris is not an idiot. Kamala Harris's advisors are probably very well-educated people. They're not fucking stupid. They know that as well. But if you're if your uh, policy, if your shit doesn't come with, um, number one, a Palestinian right to return, because there are 14 million Palestinian re refugees all around the globe right now that would love to go back to their homeland at any time. So if there's no Palestinian right to return, shut it up. If there's no, if there's no actual like sovereign Palestinian state, shut it up. If there's no end to the apartheid state, shut it up. Because we cannot continue to say that we do not support apartheid, we don't support oppression, we can't, we can't fucking idolize Nelson Mandela as some peace fighter for love and, and, and happiness and all this bullshit that the white that the whitewashers love to do. Mm -hmm. And then fund apartheid and genocide right now. We can, it, you literally can't square it. <laughs> you quite literally can't square it. And the apartheid state of Israel, the imaginary state, this settler colonial like nightmare, this white supremacist fever dream has mm -hmm. to come to an end because it is not sustainable. Because little do you know it, the economic boycotts on Israel are working. The boycotts on McDonald's and Starbucks are working. The, yeah. the And there has been a cultural shift. There has been a cultural shift around what, what it means to be Palestinian, what it means to have Palestinian land, what it means to be oppressed. And that shit is important because culture influences politics, period. Culture influences politics, period. So the gains that we have made, the gains that we have made in, human, in humanizing Palestinian people is, is not... It's not a small win, but we have so much farther to go and to get back to the point and wrap this up with a cute little bow. Supporting Kamala Harris without having some kind of hard line around genocide, without having some kind of hard line even around domestic policy, because y'all didn't even have no lines around domestic policy. Just giving your support to her blindly right now 
when this is protest time, when this is pressure time, when this is the man's time, it's stupid as fuck. Yeah. I'm going to call it what it is. It's stupid as fuck. There's no strategy in that. People keep talking about, well, it's about strategy. It's about longevity. It's about this. There is no strategy in continuing to sacrifice. Sacrifice not only Palestinian people, not only people in Congo, not only people in Haiti, mm -hmm. but to sacrifice American children that cannot afford to eat unless they're in school, to sacrifice working class people all across this country. Every single time we get a neoliberal Democrat that speaks to working class issues, but does nothing to actually remedy them. If yeah. you want to solve poverty, give people money. The Democrats have one fucking job and they can't even fucking do that. So yeah. no, so no, 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 no. I don't want, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Get out of my DMs. I don't want to hear it. Period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw my tweet, but I said this and it caused a, a stir. I said, a ceasefire is not good enough. They deserve the right to return and reclaim their land. And 32,000 people liked it, All right? Um, and a lot of Zionists came in. They hate me for that. But my thing is, is like the whole thing about a ceasefire has been diluted. It's been co-opted now. So now... I'm going to go the route of going even more further because now people are like, oh, my God, you're moving the goalposts. Yep, I am moving the goalposts because the thing is that y'all co-opted the last goalpost, so now we got to move it even further. So now what we're doing is saying that they deserve a right to return to their land. They also deserve a right to sovereignty and having their rights respected by all states in the world. And so the whole thing where people talk about, oh, we just need a ceasefire. The thing is that, for instance, when Kamala said, oh, we need a, a ceasefire, and then everybody clapped, and she said, for six weeks afterwards. Like, no, 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 no. Big pause. Big old pause. Big pause. And the crazy part is a lot of times people will go, well, she's for a ceasefire. And I'm like, she's for a pause to make so that you vote for her. That's what it is. And everybody's- she said that shit back in March, y'all. She said that shit back in March. Yeah. A temporary, a temporary pause in genocide is wild as hell. That is asinine. Wow. That is asinine. It is inhumane to even suggest that there should be a temporary cease to literal mass murder and extermination of an entire yeah. race of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is, it's like, what, what is going to happen after that ceasefire? Explain to me what's going to happen. What is going to happen to those people who are in Gaza? What's going to happen to the people in Rafa? What's going to happen to the people in Janine? What's going to happen to the people in the West Bank <laughs> where Hamas is not there? Clock that team. Clock that team. Because the thing Clock is, everybody team. wants to care about what's going on in Gaza, but nobody talks about what's going on in the West Bank, even though the Israelis are lit. The IOF is literally killing people in the West Bank and Hamas is not there. Clock it. Do you guys care about that? And I also have another question for you because this is really getting on my nerves right now. Black people, come here, come here. Let me ask you something. Is our liberation connected to theirs? Because some of you black people somehow think, oh, well, that's way over there. That has nothing to do with us. So therefore, we're just going to, you know, never mind them. My question is, does it have something to do with us? Afini, if you can answer that question for them. Here's what I say. Here's what I say. Because I do have to hop soon because, y'all, I'm in a training strategy session technically right now. Okay, so I do have to, I do have to go you know, do that thing. But I will say this. We just watched a black woman get shot in the face by a police officer the same week that Kamala Harris announced her, her run for president. Baltimore just shot an unarmed 17-year-old black boy. The same system 
the same police, the same, the same racist oppression that is destroying our communities, that are that is shooting our children, that are kidnapping our men, that are sending CPS to our houses because apparently being impoverished is neglecting your child. But I don't, y'all niggas won't give me no money. Okay. Y'all want to give another family money to take my child, but y'all won't give me money to support my family. That very same system is the same system it's the same police, it's the same occupation, it's the same oppression that is literally exterminating Palestinians right now. There is a deadly exchange of police tactics between American police and the Israeli occupation forces. There is a deadly exchange of tactics between the American police and the Israeli occupation forces. These cop cities that they're building in mostly black communities near black cities, Baltimore, Atlanta, Detroit, D.C. D.C. already has a cop city, by the way. They're talking about expanding it. All these cop cities that they are building, guess what they're going to do on those cop cities, y'all? They already announced it. They already announced it for Atlanta. They are going to be training. They're going to be cross-training with the Israeli occupation forces. They're gonna be cross training with the Israeli occupation forces on US soil with your tax dollars. If that is not our shit being interconnected, I don't know what it is. When it came down to Mike Brown in 2014, Palestinian people told, the, told those organizers, organizers that I know personally, told those organizers how to protect themselves against tear gas, the tactics that they'll use, how to kettle, because guess where the fucking police learned that from? From them, all that kneeling on the neck shit that they be doing, and they still do that shit to this day in DC, to this day in Baltimore. All that shit, guess where they learn that shit from? From the Israeli occupation forces. Mm -hmm. So they are, when I say the CIA is working on y'all, I'm actually gonna do a video on this. When I say the CIA is working on y'all, because they know that black and Palestinian solidarity is dangerous. They know that black and Palestinian solidarity is dangerous. Our solidarity, our collective thought, our collective movement, our hope, our love, our principled struggle is a threat to the empire. It is a threat to the empire for us to make these connections. So at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, if you are supporting the oppression of the Palestinian people, you are supporting. You are supporting your own oppression. You are being an active and willing participant in white supremacist culture. And so I don't want to hear a motherfucking word from you FBA niggas about reparations ever again. Period. If you can't understand what the fuck is going on right now, then you don't even have the goddamn knowledge to understand what the fuck is going on with reparations. You don't have it. Because you're not willing, you're not really down for eradicating oppression. You niggas just want to become black capitalists. You niggas just want to be white so bad. And let me tell you something. No matter how much money, no matter how many degrees, no matter how much you march and step and tap dance and shuck and jive for these motherfuckers, you will never, never be white in a white supremacist fucking society. You will never be accepted. They will always treat you as what you are to them. So when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, you, you are, you are actively supporting the, your own oppression. And what does that mean about you? What does that mean about you? Because I can tell you we ain't getting reparations if y'all don't, if y'all don't aren't willing to push on some shit like genocide. I can tell you we're not getting reparations because the U.S. is not coming up off that money easy. <laughs> the U.S. is not coming up off that money easy because they owe us this whole motherfucking shit. Yeah. Be serious. Yep. Be serious. And also, and also, our reparations money is actually going to Israel. They got health care and we don't. They got free health care and we don't. They got free they college. They keep going to college for free and ours ain't. Stop playing mm -hmm. with me right now. Yeah. So, 
Let's let, let let's stop all that money going to Israel. Let's start ha let let's start pushing for that money to go to us because it's it's money that's oh we don't owe Israel nothing. They owe us. But yet they don't want to give it to us. <laughs> um now I know you have to go, but do you have just like two and a half minutes? Because I want to play something really quick. Okay. Because yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this video really quick because I think this bears repeating. And this woman, see, this is why y'all need to start paying attention to black women, because black women, y'all been sleeping on black women for the last 400 years. And they've been telling y'all what they've been need, what, what they've been needing to tell y'all, but some of y'all haven't been listening. But we're going to listen to one. Dr. Ruha Benjamin of Spelman University, Spelman College, said this. And this is, oh. I love this lady. By the way, her braids are tight. Anyway, let's continue. Let's go. Remember, too, that despite the social media slogan, trust black women, you too have to be trustworthy. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Just look at the black proponents of Cop City in Atlanta's leadership class. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Just look at the black woman's hand, ambassador at the UN, voting against a ceasefire in Gaza. That is, our blackness and our womanness are not in themselves trustworthy. If we allow ourselves to be conscripted into positions of power, that maintain the oppressive status quo. Our blackness and womanness are not themselves trustworthy if we support the occupation of black neighborhoods with so-called better trained police or remain silent about the genocide of oppressed peoples around the world funded by our tax dollars. And here, let me please shout out the incredible Spelman students and AUC siblings who have been organizing with Stop Cop City and Justice in Palestine, among many other troublemakers in this room. You all remind us that college is not a waiting room to enter the real world, but that you can start transforming that world right here, right now. It goes without saying, but let me just say it anyway. For student activists speaking out courageously for Palestine and Congo and Haiti and to stop Cop City, they should not be threatened with expulsion, loss of scholarships, or, or have public safety called on them for protesting. Too often, our institutions celebrate student activists after they've graduated. <laughs> Even giving them honorary degrees. <laughs> but stifle student activism while we are enrolled. So with that being said, last words of Feeney. I mean, she really said it all for real. Like, I said this in a video, but truly, I mean it when I say we deserve leadership that looks like us, that actually centers compassion and humanity in their politics. We deserve leadership that not that does not use their identity as a weapon, as a cudgel, as a way to front for the imperialist capitalist empire, but uses their identity as a North Star to inform their politics to destroy all oppression throughout the fucking world. As black women, as black women, we hold so much power. We hold so much power. As black people, we hold so much power. But a Clarence motherfucking Thomas a goddamn Ben Carson, Tim Scott, them, them motherfuckers, they are using their energy towards upholding 
the white supremacist cause, Barack Obama, Kamala Harris are using their energy, their likeness, their blackness, their fucking gift <coughs> to uphold the white supremacist culture of this society, to uphold and protect the very same institutions that are actually, that are actually maintaining the fascism that is in this country, that are actually the root, the real root of the oppression in this country. These people are the protectors and the arbiters of their oppressors. Just like we had them niggas that we knew we couldn't tell about the rebellion back in the day. We knew we couldn't tell Earl ass about the, about the rebellion, about the revolt. We knew we couldn't tell Earl ass. We can't tell Kamala, we can't tell Tim, we can't tell Clarence, we can't tell these niggas about our plans for liberation because they are not on our side and they're gonna go tell Massa. Not only are they gonna go tell Massa, but they are willing to shoot you to protect him. So you really have to choose. You have to choose because I feel like a lot of, and like this is really the last thing I wanna say, because I feel like it's just really important to end on this. I feel like a lot of black people, y'all are frustrated. Y'all are tired. Y'all are beat down. Y'all are working hard. Black women, especially, they told us to go out here, get these degrees, do all this shit, run and run and run. We did all the things and we still not getting the shit that we fucking deserve. We're still not getting the shit they promised us. And a lot of you motherfuckers is angry. And we can see it in our culture. We can see the violence in our culture. We can see all the things. And intercommunity violence exists in all cultures. Let's be clear. But we can see it in the media. We can see it in our music. That there is anger. There is resentment. There is that thing. And that is where we're operating from, y'all. And I can tell you right now that hate that capitalism, that participating in the empire, that recreating the very same systems that oppress us to oppress others, whether that be trans people, gay people, whoever, recreating those things, adopting those things, it's never going to lead to liberation for us. It's never going to lead to liberation for us. So we must do something different because hate, hate's not gonna dispel hate. Only love can do that, period. So. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Afini. And uh, if you guys would like to, you guys can always follow Afini at Red is Ari. Ari. Facts and Fire. Oh, Facts and Fire. Okay. Facts and Fire. At Facts and Fire. Sorry. It's at new. Facts and Fire. <laughs> oh, also on, on, on uh, TikTok as well, right? Yeah. On all the things. All the things you can follow me at Facts and Fire. Okay. All right. Thank you so very much. And I'll see you in the interwebs. Bye. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. <laughs> All right. And so uh, in, in, in also saying so, I, I think a, a lot of times people just do not know, you know, who she is, right? You know, like we said, black faces and high places ends are going to save us. This is from Jamal Tutu. Yeah, we ended up losing. Uh, we ended up losing. And after our loss, after our loss, uh, uh, got convicted, whether well, the sentence came in, you know, obviously the courtroom is full. I know who this lady Kamala Harris is, right? People in the projects knew who she was because she was a black district attorney. And we thought that we had a black district attorney in office, right? And who we perceive to be black, right? That will have a, that's from Oakland. And that's all we, we kind of knew. And we would think that, you know, that she would, you know, be a little bit more favorable to us. Now, during my trial, I didn't even think of this lady, just in general. I just knew that she was the head DA. They never came and tried to talk to me or anything of the sort, right? It was strictly you did this we charging you you're going down so at my preliminary uh, at my uh um, uh um on, on verdict day i remember seeing you know seeing her in the back when i walked in and when they laid down the convict the uh that uh announced that i was you know convicted for first degree murder which i already knew i was convicted because the jury 
asked a question uh, uh, to to the, to the bailiff because they give like these questions to to be clear to the judge or whatever it may be, and we get to uh, we we get to uh, 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 know what the question is. They bring they bring us down uh, to what the question is, and the question was, what's the difference between first degree murder and second degree murder? So I already knew that they just decided if it's going to be first degree or second degree. So I already came in there with the energy of like, like, you know, I'm convicted. Now, they already knew too. So that's why the courtroom was super packed. And you see Kabbalah Harris like literally like front row, opposite side on the defensive side. And, you know, when they came with the verdict guilty, you know, me, I wanted to make sure I seen every nick that was in that month on that side, not supporting me and everybody else that was on that side because I knew for one, I didn't do it. I stood on principle and, you know, and I was going to fight to, to ultimately get back. And I'll never forget when I turned around and I looked and I seen Kamala Harris, you know, we locked eyes this, this one time and she, and she laughed. She literally just like kind of bust out laughing almost as in if she was pointing at a neck, like, ha, 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 ha. That's how I felt. Though she didn't point, she didn't point. But that's how I felt when she was laughing at the verdict coming down. So, you know, I took it in. It's like, all right, pause. Uh, and it was like, all right, whatever. So now the next, the, the next thing that I need to figure out is how can I get a, a retrial before I get sentenced, right? I don't know. I'm learning all of this stuff. I'm learning the law. What is it that, you know, it is nobody out of everybody that was there. Nobody, everybody knew I didn't do it, but Nick in their mind, they thought of it as in if, even if you came and testified to say that I didn't do it and not say that somebody else did it, that's still telling when it's not. You know what? It's people like her. It's people like her that are the reasons why I do what I do. Why I have this chin. Because a lot of people will come into the comments and talk about, well, we just need to uh, uh, vote somebody in that is going to uh you know come up you know for us right and she's not for us she hasn't been for us so why are some black people pretending like she is she's never been for us and lgbtq people she never been for us either this is the same woman i can bring up the article again but this is the same woman that denied trans uh, trans women the right to actually transition while they were in jail, while they were in prison. She's not for us. She's never been for us. And the thing is, is like for 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 you to sit there and believe the lie, y'all believe the lie that she's actually for us. My goodness. And so if, and, and, and by the way, to this person that keeps commenting about um, about anti-Black sentiment within the Arab community, there's anti-Black sentiment in our own community. What are you talking about? Number one. Number two, on top of it, we're not going to paint an entire group of people with a broad brush. We don't like it when they paint us with a broad brush, so we're not going to paint them with a broad brush, right? All right. Let's start. Let's start uh, being more nuanced. And on top of it, we can fight for our own liberation in accordance to also being in solidarity with other people when it comes to their liberation too. We can fight for reparations for ourselves 
while also standing in solidarity with Palestinians, right? And the thing is, it's like, you're doing what white people do to you. That's what you're doing, Barrington. You're doing what white people do to you. And you don't like it when white people do it to you, so why are you doing to other people? Oh, 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 but I'm different because I'm black. Just because you're marginalized does not give you the right to also subject and marginalize other people. Shame on you for doing it too. Shame on you for acting like a white supremacist and blackface. Shame on you. No, we can do both. We can actually fight for ourselves and we also uh, stand in solidarity with other people. And stop insulting the black community for saying that, oh, we can only do one thing at a time. No, we're magic, baby. We can do multiple things at a time. Get the fuck out of here. Saying that, oh, well, all, all Arabs are, are racist. You sound like a Zionist right now. We got, we, got, we, got, we got enough black Zionists already. All right? We got enough of them. So now you're just perpetuating the Zionism within the black community. When in reality, we have stood with the Palestinians for, <laughs> for decades. Need I, should, should I bring up the picture of Huey P. Newton standing with Palestinians? Come on now. See, this is the problem. Is that we forget the solidarity because the thing is, we all have the same enemy, man. But the problem is, some of us, we want to be on top so bad. The thing is, we don't, we don't need to be on top. We need to stand beside. Stand beside people. Not on top of one another. And stand up when somebody tries to put their foot on our necks. The goal is not to be in power over people. It's to stand shoulder to shoulder with others. Now, I'm going to keep fighting for reparations for American descendants of slavery. Because, number one, not only am I one of them, but also it is a debt that's owed. But I also do not like the fact that my federal dollars that would be going to my reparations, that would be coming to my check, is going to a state that is actually committing extermination of an indigenous people across the world. I do not like the fact that my money is going to exterminate people in Congo, in Tigray, in Sudan. I do not like the fact that my money that should be going in my pocket that's owed to me, that's going to put a puppet dictator in Haiti? No, 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 no. I can have solidarity with all these other people and still fight for my people here. I can do both and I'm doing both. So that's the point. And genocide is wrong. Let's just stand, let's just do the right thing and stand against it. So that's my thing. We can, we can do multiple things at the same time. And let's stop insulting our people and making them seem like they can only do one thing at a time. Don't insult, don't, don't insult our people like that. We can do, we can do multiple things. Man, Afini really have an effect on me. That's why I love that sister. And Let me share this as well. Oh, yeah. Let me see. I want to share this as well from uh, Misfit Black Girl. She said this, and then we're going to give the contract as well. I ain't done with Kamala yet. Shout out to Misfit Black Girl. And I will read her caption after this. But just to set it up, here is Kamala Harris here. 
And it is my promise to everyone here, when I am president, we will continue our fight for working families of America. Including to raise the minimum wage and eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. All right. So let's let me what Miss Flip Black Girl said. She said, "Excuse me, did she just say she would raise the minimum wage?" Kamala fit, failed to use her power to overrule the Senate parliamentarian to pass a bill to raise the minimum wage. It was all in her hands, and she refused to do it. Who is she fooling? We haven't forgotten. She's right. Because when they had the opportunity to raise the minimum wage, they said, oh, my God, the parliamentarian wouldn't allow us to do it. Did you know that the president and the vice president can actually fire the parliamentarian? How do we know? It's been done before. George W. Bush and Dick Cheney did it. When the parliamentarian wouldn't go the way that they wanted, they fired the parliamentarian, passed it through anyway. So if they can do that legally, then it could have been done to raise the minimum wage legally because they had that power to do it. Stop believing the lies. Stop believing the untruths. That's who Kamala Harris is. She's a lawyer for a reason, baby. Not all lawyers, I'm not saying that because especially people who stand you know as public defenders who actually try to defend those of us who are marginalized by the community and by the carceral state who actually try to fight for us i'm not talking about those but people like her oh yeah right and so this is why i think it's important for us to look at people like kamala harris and say no we do not stand with people like her because ultimately she's going to continue to lie to us, you know, every turn that she can get. Now, do you remember back in 2020 when she reversed her policy on Medicare for all? Let's remind the folks here. Shout out to Case Study QB for this one, because I think this is also really important. We have to keep in mind the history. This is what dialectics is about, is knowing where you've been to know where you're going. Let's talk about it. When I am president, we will continue our fight for working families of America. <laughs> including to raise the minimum wage, and eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Welcome back. That was Kamala Harris taking a page from Donald Trump there at her rally in Nevada last night. Here with me is Independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. Thank you so much for being here. So uh, Kamala Harris is adopting a policy that Trump has been pushing in the campaign trail all summer. The nonpartisan tax policy center says Many tipped workers make so little that they already don't have income taxes that they owe, and eliminating payroll taxes could reduce their Social Security and Medicare benefits. Do you believe that the Harris proposal actually would help low-income workers, Senator? Well, Dan, it's an issue I really haven't studied, but this is what I do know. Uh, we live in a country with a terribly regressive uh, tax policy. Uh, at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, when the richest people are doing phenomenally well, billionaires pay an effective tax rate lower than working people. And one of the things that we have got to do is create a tax system that is fair, that says to large profitable corporations, some of whom pay almost nothing in federal taxes, you're going to start paying your fair share of taxes and the same thing with the very wealthy in this country. So I think we need to take a look at the entire tax system which is grossly unfair and benefits the rich at the expense of working people. Senator, Hang on. 
So let, 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 you will not be able to ever have a fair tax system and a capitalist system. Never. Because who owns the government? Not us. It is the people who are way at the top. It is these corporate parasites that own our politicians. So if they own our politicians, then what does the tax code look like? It's going to favor them. It's always going to favor them. So you can talk about, oh, they need to pay their fair share. They need to pay their fair share, right? All you want. And also the whole, they need to pay their fair share. You're, you are ceding fairness to their exploitation. You're saying, oh, well, they have the right to exploit. It's just they have to pay back the exploitation just a little bit more. No, 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 no. The problem is, is that they should that they shouldn't be able to exploit. Period. Period. And see, this is why I have moved beyond Bernie Sanders, because Bernie Sanders is weak. He is weak as hell. He's weak on foreign policy. He is weak on domestic policy. And anybody who keeps championing Bernie Sanders, I'm sorry, but <laughs> that's like somebody who considers salt on food to be spicy. Like, my God, are you kidding me right now? The issue is that when it comes to taxing billionaires, it's never going to happen if you keep this system in place. Because all they're going to do is bring, look, Senator so-and-so, Representative so-and-so, I'm going to give you this much money to put in your coffers, into your war chest, if you vote against this tax policy. Therefore, don't raise it, and then I won't raise money against you, so then you can stay in office. That's the problem. And the issue is... People like Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, yes, him too, the J.D. Vances, the Tim Waltzes, even some of the people who cons are considered progressive, they ultimately follow the lead of the people at the top. And they can say, well, I don't take money from billionaires. Yeah, but you... Take direction from the people who do. You take direction from the, the Hakeem Jeffries, right? From the Chuck Schumers. You take direction from them, so therefore you're taking direction from the billionaires. You may not be getting funding and direction from the billionaires themselves, but indirectly, you are. You're taking your cues from them. Bernie Sanders may not be getting money from APAC, but he's taking direction and cues from the people who do. He may not be getting money from J Street, but he's taking direction from the people who do. So if he's become a Zionist by proxy, there you go. Some of these cop politicians that consider themselves progressive are corporatists by proxy. They may not be getting corporate money directly, but by proxy, they are because they're obeying the people who do get corporate money. This is why I continuously talk about leave both parties, because if you continuously stay within it, then guess what? They're going to lay you out the pasture every single time. Sir, you were one of President Biden's staunchest defenders right up until the end uh, when he did drop out. Mm. You waited about a week to endorse Vice President Harris and said that you wanted to make sure that she, quote, it stands up strongly with an agenda that speaks to the long neglected needs of working families. Are you fully convinced that she is committed to that now? Before, before Bernie Sanders answers that, if she is truly committed to standing up for working families, why doesn't she have the plan laid out on her website? 
Look, I've been live for an hour and 16 minutes now. At the beginning of this stream, I actually went to her website and showed you her policy positions, which are non-existent. So therefore, you cannot speak to policies that aren't on paper. That's Kamala Harris. So whatever he says is going to be an assumption to what he thinks that she will do. It's going to be an a, a, a educated guess to what she's going to do. Which means Bernie Sanders is going to give a non-answer. Don't believe me? All right. Bet. Let's listen in. Well, I think she has been running a very strong campaign up to now. I am really impressed by the energy, the enthusiasm, uh, the large crowds that she is drawing. So vibes. Vibes. I'm impressed by the large crowds. I'm impressed by the enthusiasm. Are you buying it? This is why I said on, on the title, Kamala Harris thinks you're dumb. She thinks you're stupid. Uh, she should be very proud of the record of the Biden-Harris administration mm. uh, in taking on the greed of the pharmaceutical industry, lowering the cost of prescription drug, creating millions of jobs, uh, by rebuilding our crumbling uh, infrastructure. We've done more in that area. Any administration in history, we're working hard to combat climate change, creating jobs, uh, doing that. So we're making some progress. Uh, I have been around the country. I've been in New Hampshire. I've been in Maine. I've been in Minnesota. I've been in Wisconsin campaigning uh, for uh, Kamala Harris and, and uh, Governor Walz. I'm going to do everything that I can to see that Donald Trump is defeated, and they are the next administration uh, in this uh, in our country. You know what I noticed just now? He did not list one policy proposal that Kamala Harris is saying she will do if she were to win. Nothing at all. I can't believe I used to support this guy. Wow. The BS is crazy, man. Can, can you believe that you used to support him? Like, and his website was comprehensive at the time. And yet, now he's saying, well, she did this in the past, so I'm guessing she's going to be doing this. Hmm. When you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Kamala Harris thinks she don't. Apparently, Bernie does too. Just talking about some of the policies that you care most about. She has reserved, reversed herself rather on some, like Medicare for all. Uh, mm. on some parts of immigration policy, fracking. Mm. Does that give you cause for concern? Hang on. Dana Bash is actually correct on this. She reversed her policy on Medicare for all. She's now trying to sound like Donald Trump when it comes to the border. And on top of that, she also reversed her her stance on banning fracking. Now she's pro-fracking now. And guarantee you this, mark my words, after the Democratic Convention, which is next week, after that, she's going to do what all Democratic politicians do post-primary. They move to the Senate. Move to the Senate. To the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. That's what she's going to do. Because we got to win the moderates. 
this is what's going to happen. Bernie Sanders knows this. Kamala Harris knows this. I know this. Do you know this? I hope you do now. Because in the end, it's never going to be about you and me. It's never going to be about the workers. It's always going to be about the people who they're set to maintain the system for. And that is the people who own all this shit. That's who it's going to be for. Let's see Bernie wiggle his way out of this one. Well, look, she has to run her campaign, and I'm sure she oh. is, you know, talking to all kinds of people oh. to come up with an agenda that will uh, lead to victory in November. Mm. Uh, but I believe that when you contrast what her policies are compared to Donald Trump. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Even though she's sounding like Donald Trump right now, even though she's moving herself towards the, the the same positions as Donald Trump, oh, but she's not Donald Trump. Oh, 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 oh she's not Donald Trump. No, oh, 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 oh. Apparently, Bernie Sanders thinks you're dumb too. Are you sure? Man, why didn't I see this four years ago? You know, I feel like when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I acted as a child, I thought as a child, but now I put away childish things. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, who doesn't even believe uh, that climate change is real. He thinks it's a hoax who wants to give more tax breaks uh, to billionaires. Wait, but doesn't Kamala want to support fracking now? Didn't Joe Biden, who Kamala Harris is also part of the administration, do the whistle project, which is also ushering for climate change? <laughs> Being a little harsh here? Bernie, come on. Come on, Bernie. Bernard. Uh, who hasn't begun to talk about the kind of income and wealth inequality uh, that we have in this country, who talked a big game about taking on the drug companies, but has did nothing uh, during his administration. I think the contrast is very clear. But having said that, uh, you know, as you may know, we did a poll. My campaign did a poll last week mm -hmm. uh, on some of the major issues facing working families. And what we found, uh, not to my surprise, because it's consistent with other polls, is that the American people overwhelmingly, for example, want to expand Medicare to cover- Wait, 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 wait. Expand Medicare? Hang on. Weren't you the Medicare for all guy? Isn't Medicare for all almost 90% among Democrats? I think it's somewhere over 60% for independents and over 50% for Republicans. I thought that was a winning message. Don't, didn't you? Bernard. What's up? Why you walk away? Hmm? Why aren't you pushing Kamala Harris in that direction? Why aren't you? Pushing Kamala to the left. Oh. Oh, there it is. Everybody was like, well, we need to push Kamala to the left. Why not push her to the left while she's engaging in this months-long job interview? Why aren't we pushing her to the left so that she'll do the job when she gets into office? Why is Bernie blocking us from that? Oh, oh, she heard her much. The dental, hearing, and vision. Why? Because 50% of our seniors are living on incomes of 30000 or less, and a quarter of them are living on $15,000 or less. Mm. Uh, not to anybody's surprise, the American people want to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. Why didn't they do it 
Yet they've had three years, unos, dos, tres, three years to do it. And they did not do it. Mo, hi, ba, three years. Three years to raise the minimum wage. And they didn't do it. Do you guys know that it need, do you need to make at least $35 an hour in Florida in order to afford a two-bedroom apartment? I talked about it many times before. $35 an hour to afford a two-bedroom apartment at 30% of your income. And what policy does Kamala Harris say? Does she give us a specific number? Oh, we're going to raise the minimum wage to $25, $30, $35 an hour at the federal level. It's still $7.25, baby. It's still $7.25. Kamala Harris thinks you're dumb. Jeez Louise. American people want to expand Social Security. It's over 70% of the American people expand Social Security by lifting the caps cap on taxable income so that the wealthy start uh, contributing. Uh, so I Why hasn't it do been done in three years? As somebody that gets Social Security disability, what I get is wholly inadequate. What my mother gets on Social Security is wholly inadequate. Therefore, why didn't you do it in the last three years? You actually had a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate and a presidency within the first two years. Why didn't it get done? Why wasn't this done during the Obama administration, who Joe Biden was the vice president of? In the first two years, between 2008 and 2010, Barack Obama had a majority in the House and a supermajority filibuster-proof Senate. He could have passed that through, especially knowing that it would affect seniors in a positive way, meaning that it would have made him even more sure. It would have set up Democrats for years to come. Oh my God, my social security check is three times the, the, the size that it, it was. And who's the people who vote the most? Seniors. Behind, and I'm disabled. Well, I think the agenda that we have talked about for working people, expanding Medicare, expanding Social Security, raising the minimum wage, demanding that the wealthy start paying their fair share of taxes. This is an agenda that is not only good policy, it's what we should be doing when so many of our working people are struggling, so, but it is good politics as well. So Senator, do you want Vice President Harris to talk, she does talk about raising the minimum wage, but on expanding Social Security and Medicare, should she be more aggressively pushing that uh, on the stump, on her website uh, as she, explain to the American people what she would do? Well, Donna, my understanding is that she is gonna be coming out with an economic agenda next week. So we'll she see what she has to say. Uh, but I believe, you know, during the Build Back Better uh, period, when we tried to really make some fundamental changes in the way this country works, uh, that's what we were talking about. And it is enormously popular. So many of our seniors having a hard time finding dental care or affording it, uh, so many seniors today are, are just struggling on limited income. So expanding Medicare is the right thing to do. Uh, and let's remember that when we talk about health care, uh, the United States today is the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care. You know, he's been saying this for, gosh, since 2016. So what, about eight years? He's been saying these same facts it's funny how he knows, you know, all the issues, but when it comes to the actual solutions, it's always, well, we got to go through the Democratic Party. All right, Bern. All people as a human right, and 
we do that, we have that situation just by spending twice as much per capita on healthcare as the people of other countries. Uh, we have got to lower the cost of prescription drugs on the Biden-Harris administration, done a good job. They're going to announce, as I understand it, this week, some significant breakthroughs in having Medicare negotiate prices with some of the with some of the largest drug companies in the world, lowering prices. That is a huge deal. But we've got to go further. We cannot continue to pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. So we're making progress. A lot more has to be done. And I look forward uh, to the vice president speaking to some of those issues. Senator Bernie Sanders, thank you so much. Meanwhile, there's a HIV drug that if they charge 40%, they will make a 30% profit off of, but they're actually charging over $4,000, I'm sorry, $40,000 per year for an HIV drug. That's from Gilead. Uh, Gilead. Gilead is charging over $40,000 for an HIV drug. That could also be the closest thing to an HIV vaccine. <laughs> My thing is I'm not asking for perfect. I'm just asking for good. And apparently the Biden-Harris administration couldn't even give me that. This is why I say leave both parties because really it's just a ratchet effect. The ratchet effect just completely keeps us in evil. People talk about, oh, the lesser of two evils, the lesser of two evils, you're still voting for evil anyway. Right? Got to stay woke though, right? So when it comes to somebody like Kamala Harris, you got to realize the truth about her. Like Dr. Ruha Benjamin said, black faces in high places are not going to save us. This is why I talk about, when people go, well, JB, what do you expect us to do? And then I say, well, we need to organize. We need to organize to build dual power outside of this system because nobody's really going to save us. We have to save us. Now, if you still want to do electoral politics, I will be voting in November. There's two things you can do, right? Like, for instance, I'll be talking about the amendments in a little bit. I'll be talking about the amendments that we vote on when it comes to direct ballot initiatives. I will be talking about that. Are you up to date? on what the amendments that you'll be voting for in November that directly affect you in your state. If not, let's get acquainted with it. I'll be doing mine for here in Florida. I know Savvy, my sister from another mister on her channel will also be going over each state. So if you wanna know, tune into her too, right? You guys wanna know about Florida? I'll be talking about Florida. Now, you can vote on those. Pay attention to your local elections. And I would say vote third party down ballot. Not just in the national race, but also state races. I'm going to be having on people who are running locally third party as well. I will be I will be interviewing people. I interviewed a few weeks ago, Andre Stackhouse. Did you know he's running for governor of Washington state under the Green Party? Did you know that? You know now, there are Green Party people that I'm in contact with right now that will be coming on. I also want to have people who are independent and running other third parties that may be running. I'll even be open to interviewing people who are running Libertarian. Fine. Okay. Third party. But I want to interview people who are running third party. And if you guys know people who are running third party, let's have more. Let's talk, let's talk policy. Local, I don't care if it's city. It can be city or county. Fine. But the point, the point is, is that that's one thing that you can do. Another thing you can do 
is vote third party on the national level. And people will say, well, if we vote for, say, let's vote for this third party person, Trump will win. Yeah, and? And some people may get turned off by hearing me say that. But the thing is, it's like, what's the difference between either one? What happened to Roe v. Wade? Under what administration did that happen? My thing is, is that ultimately, a genocide's happening under which administration? You're going to get the same thing no matter what. So you might as well swing for the fence. Let's go either independent or third party. There are multiple people. There's Jasmine Sherman. There's Dr. Cornell West. There's Claudia De La Cruz. There is uh, Dr. Jill Stein. There's a few people that are running third party. And if you say, well, I want to vote for a woman, most of the people who are running third party or independent are actually women. Most of them are women. And one of them is Jewish and the rest are women or black and brown women. So take your pick if you want to go the, the, the identity politics route. And those ones that are running are against genocide. So you can vote your conscience too. If you're black and you're definitely for reparations, guess what? Cornel West supports reparations. Claudia De La Cruz supports reparations. Jasmine Sherman supports reparations. And Dr. Jill Stein actually has a very deeply comprehensive reparations policy that I actually talked about with Dr. Dr. Jill Stein. That goes lineage-based for American descendants of slaves. So if you want to talk about reparations policy for those of us who are Black, Black Americans in this country, well, there you go. Right? If LGBTQ, there you go. You want to support things like our our right to privacy? Well, there you go. So my thing is, is like you can go in a different direction. Don't let these people scare you. That's all they do. That's all they're there for is to scare you. I'm going to share this and then I'm going to move on to the next subject, but I want to share this with y'all because ultimately, like I always say, if they do it to us, they're going to do it to you. All right. Let me share this. If here's what people don't seem to comprehend. If they are comfortable killing other people, they will eventually be comfortable killing you. If they are comfortable enacting genocide against one group of people, they will eventually be comfortable enacting genocide against you. You are not exempt from the rules of violence that they set. Let me go to my notes for this. If they're comfortable with committing genocide against others, they'll be comfortable committing genocide against you. Just look at the Native Americans and the Black population in this country. Native Americans have been going through a genocide for 500 years. The genocide is still going, going. Did you know that? The genocide against Black Americans has been going on for 400 years ever since they started bringing us to these shores. We're still being genocided in these streets. Don't believe me? Look at the prison population. We are 5% of the world population, and yet in the United States, we have 25% of the prison population. Almost 50% of that prison population is Black Americans, even though we're only 13% of the population in this country. 
50% of the exonerations in this country are for black people. 50% of exonerations, meaning we are being unjustly arrested over and over and over half the time. There is a genocide happening here too. We have seen many genocides happen outside of what's going on in Gaza. One million Iraqis just entered the chat. That was a genocide committed by who? George W. What about the genocides that happened in other countries outside of Iraq and Palestine? Oh, who is that perpetuated by? Barack Obama. Even murdering actual American citizens like Anwar al and his 16-year-old son. Genocides have been committed constantly by both parties. Just because someone is marginalized in carrying out the extermination doesn't make it less lethal. This is why we must resist the black faces, the queer faces, the woman faces, the brown faces in high places. That's why I played the speech by Dr. Ruha Benjamin. It is important that we resist these faces that put a smile on imperialism, that put a smile on exploitation. A smile that exploits you is no different than a scowl that exploits you. In the end, you're still being exploited. And it's, in the end, you're still being genocided. So, resist in the streets and resist in the ballot box. But by all means, resist. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.